lesson has something to do with the formation of fossil fuels and energy resources. Earth Science Week 4 Objectives Number 1 Describe how fossil fuels are formed. Number 2 Differentiate the types of fossil fuels. Number 3 Relate geological processes and features to potentiality of a country to have geothermal and hydroelectric power plants. Fossil fuels Rock from over the remains of plants and animals. Um, the high temperatures and pressures over millions of years can change organic matter into coal, oil, and natural gas. Now we're going to discuss coal. Take a look at the diagram. So this pit comes from the plants that live on the marshland. And it's being converted into, or it becomes peat. The lignite, bituminous coal, then anthracite. So you can see the transition coal. So we move on to the kinds of coal. We have number one, lignite. It is known as the brown coal. Can you see the color? It's brown contains the lowest grade of coal um, syempre least amount of carbon next we have the sub bituminous coal it's darker in color um, and it has a higher concentration of carbon comparable to lignite now we move on to the uh, bituminous coal okay. it has higher heating value and that's the reason why it is commonly used for um, geotherm uh, for electric generation it is a little bit shiny and smooth and layered it's layered coal another one we have anthracite coal. It is said to be the first class coal because it's hard, brittle, and shiny, lustrous, lustrous black coal. It is said to be hard and it has the highest concentration of carbon. It's good in combustion. We move on to the petroleum. It is a fossil fuel and it was uh, formed from algae, plants, and microorganisms buried in mud at the deepest portion of the large bodies of water. It contains high amount of carbon. That's why it's called as a carbon-rich organic remains. Uh, and it was subjected to tremendous pressure and heat for millions of years uses for oil common petroleum products we have asphalt heating oil benzene propane sulfur gasoline petroleum coke jet fuel diesel we have lpg ethane paraffin tar and of course kerosene petroleum is commonly used to make electronics electrical appliances uh, for solvents even in vitamins making vitamins and capsules for carpet tree for our ink our ink making curtains, roofing materials, clothes for making film, movie films, 
heart bulbs, artificial heart bulbs, crayons, petroleum jelly, um, yung antifreeze substances that are used for during winter time. Then we also have um, cleaning materials, contact lenses, eyeglasses for making plastics, dentures, bandages. Um, we have shampoo, paint, skis, glue, tires, um, candles, trash bags, for cosmetics, we also have insulations, astrotuff, lubricants, insecticides, and even toys. Then we move on to natural gas, methane mixed with hydrocarbon gas that naturally occurred in sedimentary rocks at the deep portion of the sea and ocean. It is said to be the cleanest, odorless, and colorless gas. Um, we get the natural gas in Malampaya Natural Gas Field in Palawan Island. Then we move on to our next lesson, B, energy resources. So number one, it's divided into two uh, subtopics, geothermal power and hydroelectric power. Energy resources, number one, geothermal energy is the heat within the earth comes from the Greek words geo meaning earth or soil and terme heat. It is considered as a renewable energy source because heat is natural. It comes from the deepest portion of the earth. It's produced inside the earth. Um, the people use geothermal heat for dating, uh, to heat buildings, and to generate electricity. Okay, then we move on to kinds of geothermal power. Binary cycle geothermal power plant. The heat from the hot water is boiled, is used to boil a working fluid. And then it's being pumped. And on the heat exchanger section, um, convection is happening there. And the heat is being transferred to the working uh, fluid and it tends to boil to run the turbine and then the turbine is connected to alternator or what you call generator to produce electricity then the water is injected back to the ground okay, to be reheated again Next, we have liquid-dominated geothermal power plant. Uh, one example of this is our Makban geothermal power plant located in Santo Tomas, Batangas. Another term for this liquid-dominated geothermal power plant is flash steam power plant. In here, um, of course, the hot water is being pumped again in an upward direction. And then there is a so-called steam or singaw, yung mainit na mainit na singaw. And then it tends to depressurize and allow the turbine to move or rotate. 
Then, once it is being driven, it is connected to the generator again, and it will convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy. And then, it is the excess water or steam will have to be collected again and injected in the downward uh, well. Next, we have... we have the vapor dominated geothermal power plant um, it is being um, the start we have to pump the steam we have to pump the hot water and it releases tremendous amount of uh, dry steam and then later on um, it's said to be the simplest because one example of this power plant is our TV uh, geothermal power plant in Albay. Now the dry, the dry steam have to run the turbine. Okay. And then this steam undergo condensation. Okay. As it goes under condensation, the turbine moves and the generator produces electricity. The condensate naman have to move downward and inject it again and going down the soil. Number one, environmentally friendly. The carbon um, blueprint uh, of a geothermal power plant is really very minimal. Number two, it is considered as renewable because the hot water reservoir within the center of the earth are naturally replenished making it both renewable and sustainable number three there is a huge huge potential and we do have lots of geothermal resources Lots of volcanoes. This will increase with the ongoing research and development in the industry. Number four, reliable source of energy as compared with other renewable resources such as yung ating wind and solar power. Because these two are affected by climatic changes weather okay. however a um, geothermal power plant is said to be not affected by the changes in weather number five no fuel required since geothermal energy you can get the fuel naturally see it of course natural dun sa loob na pag bumalik laging mainit yung nakukuha ng dito okay so when we talk about these advantages of geothermal energy number one environmental issues uh, the gases is said to be sulfur dioxide it's sulfur dioxide and that's emitted into the atmosphere during the pumping process or digging process Number two, surface instability. The construction of the geothermal power plants might affect the condition of the soil or stability of the land. Number three, it is expensive to put up such power plant. Number four, it is location specific. Because it has can only produce and supply energy within the vicinity of the power plant. Okay, we have hydroelectric power plant is a form of energy that harness the power of water in motion. 
such as flowing water over a waterfall or to generate electricity. Impoundment facility hydroelectric power plant. This one uses a dam to store river water in the reservoir. Then we have the water release to turn the turbine and activates a generator. As it turns, it produces electricity. The water may be discharged uh, during typhoon or heavy rains um, for flood control. Or it can, the, high, the dam can also be used for recreation. And then there must be the so called way for the fish to pass by. We call it the fish passage. And then another use of pump is for irrigational purposes. Next, we have the run of river facility hydroelectric power plant. It has a so called pen stock or canal to utilize the natural decline of the riverbed. Okay, so this riverbed is elevated to produce energy because in the pen stop, the water is released and it has to flow to the turbine to make electricity. Another term for this um, is diversion. Since there is a so-called construction of diversion, there is no need to have dam. Okay? So that's why we can call it diversion hydroelectric power. Oh, another kind of pump storage hydroelectric power plant. That's the last kind of hydroelectric power plant. Yeah, this one can store the electricity by pumping the water from the lower portion of the reservoir and then it has to go up and reach the second reservoir on the upper portion. It works like a giant battery. When high electrical demand arises, the water will going to be released back to the lower reservoir and turns, turns the turbine to produce energy. Assignment number one, if you will be given a chance to build an energy resource with 200 billion pesos budget, what action a citizen can you do to support the sustainable use of energy? We can make the so-called IPO model that represents how you will become a power Filipino. What is IPO? Input, process, output. Okay, so the question for input, what personal project program you can create for sustainable use of energy. The project may be done in school, at home, or in the community. Cite the objectives of your initiative. For example, Oplan Tipid Corriente. Example of the process. Okay, questions, what are the different strategies and activities you can do to attain your objectives? Example, setting a virtual meeting in the barangay uh, for this Oplan Tipid Corriente and the, uh, la the output, the last part, what are the questions, what are the success indicators uh, that we might expect, okay? what can be the, uh, what can be achieved when the strategies and activities are accomplished. Example, reduce electricity consumption or electric bill 
maksudnya obrolan tipit kau yang terus tu. Assignment number two. Answer the assessments on pages 135 to 137 and pages 170 to 172. Kindly submit um, your answers via messenger. Okay? It must be PM yun na lang sa akin. And then I do, we do have the rubrics here for your IPO.